Hello there! Welcome back! In this lecture, we'll talk about the cost-benefit analysis, the CBA. The cost-benefit analysis involves adding up the benefit of a course of action and then comparing these with the cost associated with it. The results of this analysis are often expressed as a payback period. This is the time it takes for benefits to repay costs. In other words, this analysis compares the cost predicted for your project with the potential benefit for your organization. You can follow these four steps to do a good CBA. Step 1. Brainstorm cost and benefit. First, take time to brainstorm all of the costs associated with the project and make a list of these. Then, do the same for all the benefits of the project. Can you think of any unexpected costs? And are there benefits that you may not initially have anticipated? When you come up with the cost and benefits, think about the lifetime of the project. What are the costs and benefits likely to be over time? Step 2. Assign a monetary value to the cost. Cost include the cost of physical resources needed, as well as the cost of the human effort involved in all phases of the project. Costs are often relatively easy to estimate compared with revenues. It's important that you think about as many related costs as you can. For example, what will any training cost? Will there be a decrease in productivity while people are learning a new system of technology? And how much will this cost? Remember to think about costs that will continue to be incurred once the project is finished. For example, consider whether you will need additional staff, if your team will need ongoing training, of you will have to increase overheads. Step 3 This step is less straightforward than step 2. Firstly, it is often very difficult to predict revenues accurately, especially for new products. Secondly, along with the financial benefits that you anticipated, there are often intangible or soft benefits that are important outcome of the project. For instance, what is the impact of the environment, employee satisfaction, or health or safety? What is the monetary value of that impact? As an example, is preserving an ancient monument worth $500,000 or is it worth $5 million because of its historical importance? Or what's the value of a stress-free travel to work in the morning? Here, it's important to consult with other stakeholders and decide how you value these intangible items. Step 4. Compare costs and benefits. Finally, compare the value of your costs to the value of your benefits and use this analysis to decide your cost of action. To do this, calculate your total cost and your total benefit and compare the two values to determine whether your benefit outweighs your cost. At this stage, it's important to consider the payback time to find out how long it will take for you to reach the break-even point, the point in time at which the benefits have just repaid cost. For simple examples, where the same benefits are received each period, you can calculate the payback period by dividing the projected total cost of the project by the projected total revenues. For example, a program that costs $3 million and accrues $8 million in benefits has a benefit cost ratio of 2.67. It's 8 million divided by 3 million. A benefit cost ratio of 2.67 means that policymakers can expect $2.67 in benefits for every dollar in costs. A BCR greater than 1 means the benefit outweighs the cost and the investment should be considered. If the ratio is less than 1, the cost outweighs the benefits. And if the benefit cost ratio is equal to 1, the benefits are equal to the costs. Consider this. Project A costs $3 million and accrues $8 million in benefits. Project B costs $17 million and accrues $10 million in benefits. So the CBA for Project A should be 2.67 and the CBA of Project B will be 1.7. In this case, we should choose Project A because the larger the CBA, the better. The CBA Flaws. Cost-benefit analysis struggles as an approach where a project has cash flows that come in over a number of periods of time. 
particularly where the return may vary from period to period. In these cases, use net present value and internal rate of return calculations together to evaluate the project, rather than using cost-benefit analysis. These also have the advantage of bringing time value of money into the calculation. So let's do a recap. In this lecture, we stated that the CBA is a relatively straightforward tool for deciding whether to pursue a project. It involves adding up the benefits of a course of action and then comparing these with the costs associated with it. You can follow four steps. First, brainstorm cost and benefits. Second, assign a monetary value to the costs. Third, assign monetary value to the benefits. And step four, compare cost and benefits. Keep in mind that the farther into the future you look when performing your analysis, the more important is to cover your estimates of benefits of our costs into today's dollars. Unfortunately, the farther you look, the less confident you can be of your estimates. For example, you may expect to reap benefit for years from a new computer system, but changing technology may take your new system obsolete after only one year. Coming up next, we'll talk about the payback period. See you there. Thanks for watching.